Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. Johnny's guest host tonight is Frank Sinatra. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen and the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Frank and his guests, George Burns, Angie Dickinson, Carol O'Connor, Don Rickles, and John Barber. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's old Blue Eyes. Maybe this time she'll stay. Maybe this time, for the first time, love won't wander away. She will hold me fast. I'll be home at last. Not a loser. Anymore, like the first time and that time before, everybody loves a winner, but nobody loves me. Mr. Peaceful, Mr. Happy, that's what I want to be. Everybody loves a winner, but nobody loves me. Mr. Peaceful, Mr. Happy, that's what I... by Fred Evans and uh, John Candle, arrangement by Don Custer. Thank you very much. Here's a marvelous song by young Barry Manilow, most talented writer and performer, arrangement by Charles Colello. They tell me I'm the man of the hour. Champagne all around It's been so long since I've been alone It's beginning to get me down And you, you're pretty as a picture And I don't, I don't even know your name But I sure would like to meet you Why don't you see the show again? I've been singing these love songs forever Sometimes the words don't make too much sense I'm living it all through the music You 
using last night's compliments. I've been playing to thousands of people, and sometimes I think it will never end. But the look in your eyes feels good to me. Why don't you see the show again? I've been on the road for so many weeks now. I think I've lost all track of time. Trying to keep everybody happy. Sometimes I wonder what's really mine. And you, you're pretty as a picture. And I don't, I don't even know your name. I sure would like to meet you sometime. Why don't you see the show again? Why don't you see the show again? Come on in and see it. See the show. Why don't you see the show again? I'd like to tell you that our guests for the evening would be Mr. George Burns, Miss Angie Dickinson, Mr. Carol O'Connor, Don Rickles, <laughs> and Mr. John Barber. I'll be right back. Don't go away. All right. Oh, oh yes. Uh, cheers. Hello. Yes, to the to the festival. Welcome to the Italian Hour. <laughs> Need I say that it is a sheer delight to have you here with us? I'm it's delighted to be here. I never thought I would see this happen, that you would come and just sit right well, here at the I, desk and chat. I, I have envied many of the guys who've been doing this show. I really have, you yeah. know, and I figure I gotta sit in the chair where the man sits. Oh, so that's that. the big chair. That's, that's he's, the seat. He's really the best. Oh, no Let's question about that. Yes. He's the best. But when you're he, there and you're looking good. I feel about? pretty good. They roasted you, I understand, Saturday night in Vegas. To we a had a Rickles scream me. fest. They killed you. Killed me. Burned me to a crisp. <laughs> Rickles and Don and, uh, and uh, Red Buttons and Orson Welles and Red Fox and Milton Berle and uh, I can't remember all of the, the dais was an, an mm. enormous and everybody was just funny and, and Now this and, is one of the rare roasts we will see this on television. Ah, uh, yes. So all the real bad stuff was taken out. Well, yes, they'll have to say, no, there can't be all the stuff in there, no, no, no. no. When will that be on? I think it's on the end of the month sometime. On, uh, on NBC, yeah. I think the 29th or 30th or sometime. I mentioned in the uh, warm-up that uh, you were a good, dear friend of mine, and one of the nice things about you, you always communicate with people, some fashion. You have someone write a note, or you write a note, or somehow I always hear from you, which is very nice. If I, do I, I try to uh, you keep track of it. It's very, very nice. I talk to Dorothy. You know, Dorothy, you're... Mm -hmm. Master, master, my, my number the one that girl Friday, the office. Dorothy yes. Ullman, yes. She used to work on the Tonight Show staff, so we're quite friendly. I didn't know really you knew that. I didn't right? know yes, that. Yes, indeed. And I was uh, lucky enough to cull some letters that you've sent to rather prominent people, and I thought the audience might like to hear the kind of letter you write. I, um... You mean you've got your hands in I have, uh, yes. These were hermetically sealed and kept in a mayonnaise jar <laughs> all afternoon, but I happen to have them here, and they're open now. Here's a letter to Andrew Young, the United States Ambassador to the United Nations. I remember this. Yeah. My dear Mr. Ambassador, I think, I think it was an excellent idea for your staff to send letters to opinion makers across the nation requesting any suggestions we might have to make your job more effective. For openness, sir, I suggest you start brushing your teeth with Elmer's glue. <laughs> Respectfully yours, Frank Sinatra. Right. Right. I mean, if you're going to say it, just say it. Right no one ever says you were shy, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> this is a letter to Don Rickles. Uh, 
Hitless kid. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Don, congratulations and happy anniversary to you and Barbara. The fact that you two have made it through another happy year together only reinforces what I've always said about both of you. You are perfect for each other. You because you are always the same on and off stage, and Barbara because she's deaf. Love, friends. <laughs> All right. You really got one. I, I got tell you, that's marvelous. This is great. I love this one. This one hits home. Letter oh, to Monsignor is, Callahan. This is an old friend of mine. Monsignor me. Callahan. <laughs> Dear Monsignor Callahan. You think I'm going to read this? Go ahead. Well, he's, this man's got a great sense of humor. Reason I, wrote I it. hope everybody else does. Of course. <laughs> I received your note and quite agree with you that the church is getting too lenient these days. Please continue sending me arguments that I can use to combat the weakening of not only the church rules, but about morality in general. Meantime, please give my best to Sister Francesca. <laughs> I'm happy that she enjoys the Winnebago as much as you do. <laughs> Love and kisses, Francesca. <laughs> I don't get too far. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. We'll be hearing from the Cardinal, I think. In I the would order. think so, yes. This is a letter to, of all people, Anita Bryant. <laughs> Dear Anita, I'm terribly embarrassed to find out my secretary sent the wrong check in answer to your pleas for help in your new cause. She was apparently sending out a lot of checks at the same time, and believe me, there was no intent in mistaking the enclosing in your envelope the check that was made out to Fruit of the Month Club. <laughs> Love and kisses, Francis. <laughs> I hope she laughs a lot. Yeah, she'd have to have a sense of humor. They've been hitting on her pretty hard. Here's a letter to the White House. Hi, ah, yes. yes. My dear Mr. President, I received a letter written to me and other interested Americans asking for our suggestions for a person to replace Bert Lance as Director of Management and Budget. I regret I cannot help you at this time. I would have liked to submit my own accountant and business manager who, by clever manipulations, has saved me millions of dollars through the years. <laughs> but I won't even bother to mention his name because, as I understand it, one cannot take an oath of office while still on parole. <laughs> <laughs> Warmest regards, Frank Sinatra. P.S. Sir, after you read this letter, please put it in your shredding machine or give it to Jody Powell, who's very good at eating words. Oh, very good. Huh? Good letter. Very good. Very good. They're fun, you know. Good. Fun to sit around. I hope that people get a kick out of, out of, out of getting letters like yeah, that yeah. because it takes time to think yeah, up those we jokes. We make it work. So it, work, so it works on the other end. We hear now, from a lot of lawyers once in a while, too. How about the movie? I know you made a film, and it's on this Saturday night, I believe. Saturday night? Yeah, yeah. it's next Saturday night. And, called uh, Contract on Cherry Street. You haven't done a film in a while. No, I haven't. No. Strangely enough, people say to me, uh, uh, what the, how do you feel about any difference in making a movie movie or a TV movie? And there really is no difference. Oh, okay. yeah. It's a movie. Yeah. I mean, they said, but you know, the commercials break. I said, but they, the commercials break in the reruns, too. Sure, they're they're right. all movies, they got the commercials the same. the same thing. You, are you proud of it? Are you happy, happy about I'm it? I'm very happy with it. I yeah. think, think the people who, the, the, uh, the geniuses who take it after we give it mm -hmm. to them have done a great job. From uh, Rene Valenti, our producer, and Huey Benson, and, and uh, Billy Graham, our director. Uh, Billy Graham? No, not the guy oh, on the road. Yeah. No, that's yeah. just another Billy Graham. Because he's a great director. He's oh, he's a hell of a director. Yeah. <laughs> uh, We'll be right back. Don't go away. Yeah. Yeah, Doc. Have you noticed that uh, a little special salute to you tonight? We're playing all Sinatra music. I know. He's doing the whole shows. library there tonight. The whole things. You'll hear a lot of songs you know. I hope so. And look at the band. How sharp they look. Beautiful. And those dinner jackets and all. Tommy Newsom got a tux. Look at that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our first guest of the evening uh, has been in show business and delighted audience for the better part of, uh, I don't know, 80 years, I might say. He won the Oscar for his performance in Sunshine Boys. He's currently playing the title role in the movie, Oh God. And he has a television special coming up, George Burns' One Man Show, which airs on November 23rd. So it's a great pleasure for me to welcome a dear friend, Mr. George Burns. <laughs> Feeling there, George. Oh, I feel fine. Are we gonna do this sitting down? <laughs> if we do. I'd like to. Good, good. Then I think I'm doing the right thing. I love to sit down and get paid. 
That's a very good idea. Good, good business. I'll put this down here. You know, you, 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 you oh, I smoke occasionally. Yes. Listen, let me begin by congratulating you for uh, all of this wonderful work you're doing and, uh, and these, uh, these uh, great jobs you're getting. I think it's great. Is it exciting for you? Well, it's, 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 it just happened by accident. You know, I've been singing and dancing and telling jokes all my life, and then a terrible accident happened. Jack Benny passed away, which is going to happen to all of us. And all of a sudden, I became an actor. <laughs> I did the Sunshine Boys, and I played Al Lewis. I didn't use any makeup. And I played Oh God, and I'm not using any makeup, so God looks a lot like Al Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And now I just finished a picture, Captain uh, Sergeant Pepper and his Lonely Hearts Club Band. Good. Where I, I, I sing a Beatles song. I sing a Beatles song. I can song. play God, I can certainly do a Beatles song. <laughs> and I hope I don't turn out to be such a great actor that I have to give up singing. <laughs> I hope not, George. Well, I'd be know, all alone, you know. You know what happened to Paul Muni? <laughs> What happened to Paul Muni? No, I don't know what happened to Paul Muni. No. Well, the same thing happened to Edward G. Robinson. They were great singers, and they finished up there. <laughs> well, let me tell you something about acting. I found out that acting is very easy. It's much harder to do what we do, what you, where you get up and you just entertain an audience for an hour. Acting, you knock on the door, and the guy says, come in. If you walk in, you're a good actor. <laughs> That's it. You knock on the door, if you stay out in the hall when he says, come in, that's bad acting. <laughs> <laughs> I love his logic. I think it's well, great. Acting, and you can sit down and act. You don't have to stand all the time. You don't have to remember all the lines. Somebody yeah. asks you a question, how do you feel? You say, fine, good acting. Good. <laughs> if, I say, if he says, how do you feel? And I say, look on the floor, maybe it fell down. Bad <laughs> And you see, in God, in God, that's a good picture. It's a good picture. It's a good picture, and I think everybody... I saw it. I loved it. it. Good I saw picture. it. I thought the boy was very good, too. Yeah, oh, uh, John Denver, he's great. Let me tell you, he's a wonderful boy. Yes, he is. Yeah. If God really came down and wanted a nice man, he'd pick John Denver. Oh, that's There's sweet. There's nobody that's nice. That's nice. But I'll tell you something about playing God. It's a very good uh, part to play because nobody knows whether you're good or bad. <laughs> They wouldn't nope. even dare criticize you anyway. Well, you nobody, know. nobody's ever seen them. <laughs> Unless maybe Danny Thomas. <laughs> hey, Pussy. Hey, Pussy. Imagine Danny has him over every Friday night for dinner. <laughs> Imagine Danny and God having dinner and Charlton Heston walks in. They both have to get up. <laughs> <laughs> I must tell you a story. I've been kind of funny. I'm doing, I'm doing um, uh, the, uh, the Oh God picture and, uh, uh, what's his name, the director, um, um, Carl, Carl Reiner. Carl, Carl Reiner yeah. is the director. And great, great. Good actor, good singer, good dancer, good director. <laughs> and he comes over to me that there, just before lunch. He says, George, he says, I'm in a terrible spot. I'm supposed to go to a luncheon today. I forgot all about it, and you can do me a very big favor. I said, sure, Carl. You want to borrow my car? He said, no, you're here. <laughs> He forgot his hair. So I gave him my hair, and he came back and said, how did you do? He says, your hair was a smash. <laughs> I got very funny hair. That's marvelous. He's a very clever man, Carlos. Yeah. You know that? He oh, really great. is a, a, a great. Wonderful triple work. threat kind of guy. Yeah. Funny man, good director. Yeah. Freddie de Cordova, sitting right there. Oh. Must tell you a story about Freddie I think you'll enjoy. I'm enjoying it now. I didn't enjoy it then. <laughs> he, was, he was our director and our producer when I worked with Gracie. And um, he met some fella that he knew that didn't have a job for 10 years, an actor. And he gave him this job. And the fella had to come in. All he had to say was, how do you do? I'm Dr. Sam Newman. That was his part. Well, 17 takes. The guy couldn't say, how do you do? I'm Dr. Sam Newman. <laughs> so I said to Freddie, I said, Freddie, we can kill a whole season here with this one line. <laughs> Why don't, you, why don't you talk to this fella? Freddie says, I'll go and talk. I says, pay him off. He says, no, no, no. I says, I'll talk to him. So I went over to him. I said, look, I said, uh, 17 takes. How do you do? I'm Dr. Sam Norman. We, he says, Mr. Burns, don't worry about it. I'll be able to say it. How do you do? I'm Mr. Sam, Dr. Sam Norman. I said, what's your name? He said, Jack Harris. I says, forget Sam Newman. <laughs> Sam, Dr. Jack Harris. I love Jack Harris. In the first place, I says, Newman doesn't even sound like a doctor to me. Harris sounds like a doctor. <laughs> Sam, Dr. Sam Harris. He says, no, no, I, 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 Sam Newman. I says, I don't want Newman. I hate Newman. Just say I'm Dr. Sam Harris. He says, no, no, you're being kind to me. I says, okay. 
So I rings the doorbell and he opens like front come to the door and he says, How do you do? I'm I'm Dr. George Burns. <laughs> that is the God. I said I says, no, you're not. You're not Dr. George Burns, and you're not Dr. Sam Newman. Talk to Freddie, and he'll pay you off. <laughs> so then Freddie had to play the part. We had no other actor, so Freddie came to me. We'll be right. Excuse me. Oh, we'll be right my back. Finish. Okay, we'll do this. <laughs> uh, we're back. Thank you, Doctor. We're back. George, tell me something about the uh, television show. I, uh, all I know is that you, you've done a show. Well, I'm doing a... It's a one-man uh, show? It's a one-man show, but standing by in case. <laughs> there's Bob Hope, there's Anne Margaret, there's Captain and Tennille, and Gladys Knight and the Pips. See, they don't think I can, I can, I can last an hour. <laughs> they don't think so. But I do. Mm. It's a very good show. I don't want to tell you anything about it. I'll just tell you the opening. Just the opening. I walk out on the stage. I do my opening thing, and then Bob Hope comes out. That's all. I told you too much. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you. Watch it. Watch it. It's, uh, it's uh, it Thanksgiving it? Eve, and I'm not saying it because I'm in it, but I'm saying it. If you don't watch it, I want a rating. I'll kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good show. It's a great show. Listen, tell me something, George. Uh, I saw Jolson only once in my life when I was a kid. He was in the Winter Garden Theater when I saw him. And I, I only got to know him slightly before he went on. Uh, tell me a little bit about just a little about because you knew him very well. Well, he was a great entertainer. Tremendous entertainer. He was a great entertainer. He was a peculiar kind of a man. He told Eddie Cantor once to retire. <laughs> he wanted every, all the actors to retire so he'd be the only one left in show business. <laughs> <laughs> and he, was, he never allowed himself to be seen with any of the other big successful stars. He only palled around with actors who had no talent. I was, I was one of his closest friends. <laughs> he could sing, though. Oh, but he found his singing style by accident. Yeah. One day he was eating in Lindy's restaurant before the show, and he had a double order of vegetables and sour cream, which consists of radishes, cucumbers, and onions. And that night when he went on the stage and sang April Showers, he got a stomachache. And he sang, mm, do April Showers, ooh. <laughs> Uh, wait a minute, now you're putting me on. No, 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 that, and that was just from the radishes and onions. <laughs> and then when the onions hit him, he fell down on one knee, stayed there, turned under me. Uh, speaking of singing, how about... Uh, Are you kidding? You want to do something? <laughs> what took you so long? What took you so long, George? <laughs> This is just for Frank. It's, it's ten minutes of eight. There's no one at the place except you and me. I don't stay up until a quarter to three. Okay. Now, this is for you. Um, a young married... Okay. A young married lady was very much inclined just to be a little indiscreet. Once met a fellow, they were never introduced, but they met as lots of other people meet. Uh, they were both having cocktails in a private hideaway. The martinis were dry and the mood was grand. When suddenly he saw a wedding ring upon her finger as he held her dainty little hand. The door was closed. No one could hear. So he whispered in her ear. Now I know that you are married. And you know I'm married too. Nobody knows that you know me. Nobody knows that I know you. We'll meet here every day, dear. Play the same old game. But, sweetheart, if you talk in your sleep, please don't mention my name. Isn't that nice? <laughs> one more? Yeah. Okay, one more. Uh, Willie the Weeper. I, I haven't sung this in years. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. <laughs> hey, I'm not wearing anything. <laughs> Okay. Ever hear the story about Willie the Weeper? <laughs> Willie the Weeper was a chimney sweeper. He got the dope habit and he got it bad. Listen and I'll tell you of all the dreams that Willie had. He dreamed he had a barrel of diamond rings and money. Mamas by the score to love and call him honey. Everywhere he went, the people all would say, 
There's the guy who put the B in old Broadway. He went to London town. He bought the Piccadilly. He told the people there that it belonged to Willie. Learned the patchy dancing just to show his thanks. Tipped the patchy queen a half a million francs. And in the morning, just before the sun comes up, and all the lights are low. That's when Willie starts dreaming and the gleaming and he gets that glow. But now poor Willie, he's down below. He's gone, forgotten and resting where the daisies grow. Willie died singing that song at the Jefferson Theater. It was a tough audience. <laughs> Sing something together. I've never done this with Frank. Neither gonna, have I. I'm gonna get a kick out of it. What a surprise. Frank doesn't know what I'm gonna do, but just come in when, whenever, when I tell you, you jump in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> to, when I tell you. To sweethearts in the country town, the neighbors say, lived happily the whole day long. Until one day he told the must go away, she wondered then what could go wrong. No, 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 not that song. Place park scene. That's the song. Right. That's the other song. Place park scene, dark, great, big moon is shining through the trees. Cast to me, you sounds of kisses. Look at my way. Cast to me, you sounds of kisses floating through the breeze. Act one, be gone, dialogue is would you like the spoon? Then it's my cue with you underneath that great big moon. By the light of the silvery moon, where we can spoon with my honey out cruel love's tune. Honeymoon, keep a shining in June. Those silvery dreams will bring love dreams. I'll be cuddling soon. Bob, Bob. Ba, 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 ba. By the silver ring. By the silver ring. Uh, thank you, Doc. Before I introduce our next guest, I, I failed to mention earlier that the, uh, the uh, great accompaniment was done by Morty Jacobs, the George's piano player. Very nice man. He's an old friend of mine, too. Now, now, now I don't have to pay him. <laughs> that why you just twisted my arm to say that? Okay. If you had to be arrested, ladies and gentlemen, our next guest would make the whole process a great pleasure. She's America's favorite policewoman and a very long-time friend of mine. Please welcome Miss Angie Dickinson. You look lovely. You do, too. You're the best-looking cop I ever saw, I'll tell you that. <laughs> together Absolutely, on television, yeah. just not yeah. at the same time. Speaking of that, let me congratulate you on what, you know, the work you've been doing on the show as Pepper. I think it's just sensational. Thank you. Now, after the Fun. three or four years that you've uh, been on, it's a hit on NBC. Does the pressure off? You, you feel like uh, you're there to stay? Uh, no, the pressure isn't off. It still isn't off? No, I don't think so, because you get to wondering. You want to be good all the time. Sure. And it can't be real good every week. Uh, you know, we do 22 shows a season. It's a lot of shows to stay really That's a lot sharp. of words. It's a lot of, a lot of words. Got to bust an awful lot of people to make it interesting. So, no, it doesn't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't let up. But it is fun, but it's uh, hard work. Wouldn't, weren't your hours hard? You shot uh, in New York. Yeah, you? we shot in, uh, everything was on the uh, actual locations, you know. We didn't use any studios. That's really fun. Yeah. I'd like to do that, but of course, uh, we shoot ours in seven days. Just don't do it in the middle of summer in a blackout at the same time. <laughs> Just don't do that. I was there one, for the first one. Were well, you there the first uh, time? It was in November, That's though. That's no laugh. I, I tell you something fun. You weren't shooting then, were you? No, no, no. Uh, I want to ask you something. Um, I love since you. <laughs> since you've been doing this kind of work, uh, I guess a lot of people are curious about this particular uh, kind of question. Uh, do, do you act differently when you drive your car, for instance, when you're, on the, you're alone on the highway or something? Because, you, you know, you're, you're uh, in a sense, a co-worker of the, of the uh, law, law man, right? Mm -hmm. Do you I, feel differently? I feel, like a, I feel like a cop. I truly do. I, I drive differently. I used to brave it once in a while. If I was late, I'd Just go... burn it up, huh? Yes, I... You know, but I wouldn't dare uh, go 
Oh, more than a couple of miles over the speed limit. I'd be too embarrassed to get a ticket. You, have you ever had one? Have they ever stopped you at all? <laughs> Not since I've been a, a cop. <laughs> <laughs> I, they have stopped me. Yeah. I, I always make, I wave if I catch the eye of a policeman. I automatically wave. I truly feel one of them. And I, uh, they tell us that they like the show, which is the best compliment of all. But um, I was on my way to San Diego once, and uh, I got the red light. And uh, I had passed the policeman, uh, but, and I knew I was uh, on 55 or else, um, or, you know. Well, under? No, I was on it. Ah. Uh, I know because I had passed him, so I was positive I was on it. <laughs> and uh, I double-checked it when I passed him, and I got the red light. But I wasn't frightened, and it was as I thought, and he turned the red light and pulled me over, and uh, he said, I'm sorry, ma'am, for the inconvenience, but are you? I said, yes, I am. <laughs> And it was just lovely. And he apologized, and I threw him a kiss, and off I went. That's the best kind of stop to have from a cop. I, I've often uh, caught a cop's eye when I was in a car and waved at him. <laughs> and he waved back at me like this. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that I, I feel a bit like an example to people, too. Uh, and I also like to... Um, I don't like to speed. It's awful. It took me a few years to learn that. But it sure can well, be. I, I think it's taking a, a lot of Americans a long time to get used to the speed limit, as, even as long as we've had it. But I must say uh, publicly that it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing to uphold because there have been less accidents. Oh, so Speed many. kills more than anything else, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, how, uh, what kind of a hiatus do you get? We only get three months off uh, between the last show from one season to the next. And 22 season. shows in between. So, uh, sometimes, last year we went 23, the year before 24, because they needed some extra time. Uh, they must have a, dropped somebody somewhere. <laughs> Actually, uh, I, do, I don't know. I think they were doing pilots and using uh, a, a unit that was already formed. And as a matter of fact, one of them was a pilot, and I ran into Cheryl Ladd last night. Ed and I, were, we missed you at the Variety yeah, Show this year. Thing, yeah. uh, they, um, last year, Frank uh, was a master of ceremonies for John Wayne's tribute. So last what night... What a big fella. Yeah, the doll. Uh, but um, Cheryl Ladd told me last night that she got Charlie's Angels off having shown her pilot that we did with her on Policewoman for, um, for that. So that was last year's. Yeah. But it's a long grind. Yeah. You remember when we made the picture together? That's a long time oh, ago. Oh, yeah, I love it. We made it. a film together called uh, Ocean's Eleven, which she did in Las Vegas that time. And uh, that's when you were on the other side of the law. <laughs> the other, outside I, the law. I was married to you. <laughs> that was that's... a fun movie to make, you know that? Yes. You Who know was that... I? I was Beatrice. I yeah, think. I, you know, yeah, I don't remember your name, but, but uh, we were married. In the picture, we were right? married. <laughs> We never saw much of each other as in, the, as in, the, in the roles itself. You ran out on me. I all I remember. Well, I've been known to do things like that. You know. <laughs> but you know, after that picture was out for, for several months, even today, once in a while, I'll run into someone somewhere, and they will say to me, couldn't you guys have kept $5,000 out of that instead of burning it all in the, in the oh. casket? I said, you can't do that. Look, it is one to... of the great endings of any picture. I went to uh, Italy shortly after that, about a year later, and it was called Col Colpo Grosso yeah. over there. And they'd point to me, and they wouldn't say, Angie, this is Colpo Grosso. Yeah. And uh, although I was in it so very little because it was all of the men doing the, the uh, robbery. But what fun, the m most fun for me aside from being your wife in a film, was that in the daytime we would shoot, and at night, Yeah, you, we were working at the, at the Sands Martin, Hotel, yeah, four of us on stage, two shows a night, and, it, and shooting all day long. Yeah, they were... I, did you sleep at all? Hmm, when we were standing up from time to time, we got a few naps, you know. <laughs> but it was so We much had a fun. festival every evening, too, with the, with, the, with the wine and all that stuff was floating around the place. It was great fun. It was a, it was a marvelous film. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, uh, one of the interesting things about the ending that you mentioned was that Millie Milestone, Louis Milestone, who directed that film for us, uh, came up with the idea for the ending. He, Be yes, because he went to, uh, uh, I'm not trying to be morbid, but for a minute, let me just say that he went to the funeral of Bora Minovich, a very famous harmonica player who died in Paris. That little one. No, he, oh. was, he was a leader of, of uh, those died guys. In Altoona. You died in Altoona? <laughs> I died in Youngstown and another place, a split week. <laughs> 
And he went to the funeral, and in the temple, they have a, the crematorium was tied in with the temple. And, uh, in, and uh, consequently, in our picture, when, when the boys began looking at each other, wondering what the noise was in the background, it was the, uh, the incinerator, actually, is what it was. And I said to him, what do you, how do you figure that? He said, well, I saw that happen once. And we were shocked because we said, well, uh, while the rabbi was, was doing the, uh, for all the prayers, you know, they could hear this noise. Consequently, we put it in the picture, which was a marvelous switch. But uh, we, we, we uh, buried the money in the casket with, the, with the other cat, with Nicky Conti. And you know, God bless him. Yeah. And the looks, though, from one to the other, down the line, all of you realizing what was happening is just wonderful. Then we came back up the aisle the other way. <laughs> the I funny forgot came that. The funny, everybody said, they're burning the casket. Oh. The end. Uh, it was fun making that Oh, picture. it sure was. It was a great time. Well, maybe one day you and I could be cops in a movie. Yeah. Mm. Where did you keep your badge when you did Cherry Street? Or your gun, I mean. My gun? And your Fargo. That's always my problem. Uh, excuse me one minute. We'll be right back. I want to discuss this for a minute. <laughs> and it had me down. Yeah, Doc. Most of you know that my next guest is the Emmy Award winning Archie Bunker from All in the Family. This Wednesday night on NBC, we'll all see Carol O'Connor in a much different role. It's, uh, he's in a special he's written, as well as starring in, called The Last Hurrah. Let's please welcome Mr. Carol O'Connor. Welcome, Cal. Nice and to the be substitute here. job, and I'm enjoying it. Oh, How have you been? Too I haven't seen this you. This girl, uh, we made a. My first movie out here was made for Warner Brothers, in the summer of 19, uh, 19 60? 60, 60, 60, 17 years ago. I should have mentioned all. Well, she was just a young starlet of 13 at the time. 13. A very. I was very was, to Frank the year was, before. She was a very. <laughs> Well, she was a very... I've had him younger than that. We, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, That's right. Your first one. Uh, Carol, I'm, uh, I'm excited about this, uh, the Skeffington character that you're playing. They kept the name. Did you keep the same name? Yeah. yeah. Well, I went back to the novel to write a new screenplay, and yeah. so we, we kept the title. And, yeah. Uh, and there were a lot of similarities. Uh, I had to bring it up to date, Frank. You know, I brought it up to 1977. Mm -hmm. And... Um, made some changes i introduced a lovely uh, woman into this guy's life you know because in the original he was right. a widow he was a lonely celibate right. you know and i i couldn't relate somehow to a celibate mm. i don't know why yeah. <laughs> so i uh, and then i got a great uh, uh, old director old he doesn't mind if i call him old because what the hell he's 71 72 and uh, to, a real story director you know mm -hmm. the guy who directed uh, Betty Davis and a couple of films, and Joan Crawford and Bogart and these guys. And he's the guy who directed Angie and me. Vincent. Vince Sherman. For good Vince yeah. Sherman. And uh, uh, so I asked Vincent to come and direct this That's thing, you see. And uh, so he did, a, he did exactly what I expected him to do. When you say uh, you brought it up to date, uh, is it a prototype of any man we know in politics today? Yeah, well, well I, I made him. Some... I made him a kind of a mixture of, uh, uh, you know, Daly of Chicago, mm -hmm. the late Mayor Daly, with that organizational mm -hmm. thing, you know. And I tried to give him some of the eloquence of, uh, of Curly, and I, the love of Ireland of uh, Bill O'Dwyer, right? You know, right. And, and maybe a touch of Jimmy Walker. And I, well, I tried to put in there That's all the things that I knew about big urban mayors. Yeah. And, uh, That's interesting. Uh, and, well, the difference is really is that Edwin O'Connor, who wrote the, uh, 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 he's some distant cousin of mine. I never met Edwin, but uh, a brilliant writer. Uh, he he was saying in that novel, and they were saying in the first picture that this guy was a type that was uh, fading out of American life and American mm -hmm. politics. Uh, the the old patronage type. Flamboyant, certain. Go to visit the so neighborhood, and the families. Yeah. That's right. right. The, the turkeys right. and all right. that, you know. Yeah. See, but I, I took another tack. I, I, the tack I took was that this guy will never pass out of American politics. That he go, that he goes on. So I kind of reversed. Uh, it's uh, an interesting approach, really. Yeah. yeah. 
So, I don't know. I had a hell of a nerve doing that, but uh, I think we made a pretty good figure. Well, I, I, I think you're right about that because you, you look at uh, a man like uh, Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill. He, he typifies the, almost the kind of man you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, you and put you absolutely indicated exactly. That's right. Yeah. And every once in a while, another man comes along like yes, this. Yes, really absolutely. Doesn't... Tell me about, uh, about your singing career. Oh, excuse me a minute. We'll be right back. Yes. Absolutely. We're back. Thanks again, Doc. Uh, I'd like to get back before we uh, talk about the uh, about your singing career. I'd like to get back to the, yeah. I'd like to get back to the uh, to your to your movie. Uh, we've got a clip here. May we show it now? Can we can we look at it? Would you yeah. like to describe it? I, I better say something about it. Well, this is just before the election, and Frank Skeffington is running for his fourth term in office. And the Cardinal, Cardinal Burke in this city, has decided to come out against him, dislikes him intensely, thinks he's a bad guy. And the Cardinal's gesture against Skeffington is to leave the country, take a trip back to Ireland and Rome and other places, and he's going to go right before election so that everybody knows the reason he's going. Mm -hmm. And the mayor comes to plead with him to stay in town at least till the election's over. I think that's the clip you have. That's about what we're going to see. Hey. Glad to see uh, Buzz Meredith, good yeah. actor. Now, that man gave me my first uh, a telling part in, in New York when he did, uh, he, he, he uh, wrote contributed very heavily to the writing of, and he directed uh, the James Joyce Ulysses in Nighttown mm -hmm. at Zero Mostel, mm -hmm. Lord Reston, mm -hmm. play, uh, played right. it back in 1957. And Burgess gave me uh, an important part in that, and, and that kind of started me off. I, I'd done a lot of work in Ireland and England, but when I came back to my own country, I couldn't get arrested, see. Yeah. But Buzz gave me this uh, part, and uh, uh, things got better after that. We've been very close friends over the years, and he's one of the... Uh, you know, paramount uh, actors, I think, in the English-speaking world. I believe you. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Well, with me, it was a little different. A lot of countries I can't go to, so I do well over here. <laughs> 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 Tell me about, the, about your singing thing. Now, when you, when you, you know, when the first time the show came on the air... You're trying to embarrass me now. No, I'm not. I'm not, not really, no. no, no. And then uh, it opened with the vocal. I thought, yeah. that's marvelous. And I thought, what a wonderful way to open a show of that kind. Yeah. Have you always wanted to be a singer? Well, you know, listen, the first album I, I, I made, I wrote the jacket cover, and I said, I've always fantasized about making an album that would make you angry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sell, would sell so many copies, see, that Sinatra would really get sore about it. And the first album I made just made its expenses, <laughs> see. And the second album I made with Gene Staple and Ferrassier, it was never even released. The third album I made lost money. So the fantasy has been shattered. Right? I didn't know I you had that, that much recording. I don't, I don't have that fantasy anymore. No more. No, no, no I no. can't afford to have that anymore. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be back, folks, in a minute. Thank you, Doc. Our next guest is one of those rare talents who has something to say and can say it funny. He's a writer-performer on the new Laugh-In and one of the most popular, outspoken, and entertaining personalities on the local news here in Los Angeles. He's won a half a dozen Emmys as a film critic and host of his own shows. Let's welcome Mr. John Barber, right over there. Our next guest, ladies and gentlemen, is a, a very dear friend, and he is the star of the television series CPA or uh, IRS or See Something Sharky, Mr. Don Rickles.
That's it? That's it. The tune is Caballero. It's not a holiday. Sit down. Good evening, Don. How are you, buddy? Frank, this is one of the most exciting nights. I'm in a tux. Ed's in a tux. George Burns, God bless you, the senior man, and this man did not figure you were big enough to dress up. <laughs> Personally, I'm fed up that I'm dressed like this. Of course, the last time I was, it was in Brooklyn when Carmine Gambonanzo said, Guido's gone. <laughs> now, Italians, please don't phone in. I am a Jew and you're Italians, and we're all working for one cause, to find out how this girl got to look like that. How do you feel? Before, I feel great. Before you, before you jump all over me for a minute. Jump all over me, Frank. Say, I'm not that say. lonely. I... <laughs> I want to tell you that I'm so happy about the success of your show. I really am. Thanks. You deserve it. It's Thanks. a good show. Funny show. That's a funny show. Thanks. Coming from you, Frank, I appreciate it. And I've gotten a lot of shots. Freddie DeCovita, DeCovita, and uh, Johnny Carson. They've all made shots at me and uh, with fun and with love. Yeah. And I'm delighted because I think we have a great group of kids. And I love I'm, the kids on the show. They're all and, clever and, and they're funny. And we work hard. And uh, Dick Slattery, we've added as a fine captain. And the ratings came in this week, and it seems America is finding us, and we're delighted. I'm glad for you. I think it's, I think it's about time, actually, about time. Uh, what else is new, Frank? Well, I'll tell you what's new. <laughs> the following so people who report to an alley in Brooklyn. <laughs> Manganzo Mambananzo. Un papi gumbaninzi. Aldo Gambano. Now, cut that's that a out. cancel. That's a cancel. See, with Frank, if I may say, Frank, because you've been singing and dancing and just breaking it up out here. <laughs> uh, with Frank, they always make it like gangsters, Italians are gangsters, Jews have all the money. Well, that's a fact. But they always make it like Italian guys, the right, the Irish writer, always the politicians, Carol, George, George, you up? years, I can see my mother now, God bless her in Florida, going, don't make fun of the elderly! <laughs> George, I'll give you 500. You don't even have to stay with her. <laughs> 300. I'll, 300. Take, I'll take 300. <laughs> I love him, and I, I know him so many years, and he's a great man. And Ed, I never liked you. <laughs> Ed was in the Marine Corps. When the planes were attacking Pearl Harbor, he was going... <laughs> to the Queen! <laughs> Hurry back, John. Hurry back. <laughs> Hurry back, John. <laughs> when I ask you a very honest question, I want an honest answer. Sure. Who is your you favorite... Lie? Well, who is your favorite male singer? Honest? Yeah. Dick Hames. <laughs> Dick Hames, I've never, I've heard you with the modern ears at the Paramount. Ooh. You always annoy. Me. I watch the Ink Spots, the Mills Brothers. Notice how I pick black guys because they make up my bunks. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. Now that's a joke. You black people. So... <laughs> I must tell you, Frank. It's all over for you, Frank. You're, you always say to me, and always he says, with warmth and love, he says to me, Don, stop with the age. Age is how you feel. And I can hear my mom and my darling wife, who's not even in the audience. Your wife, Barbara's in the audience. I spotted her, because yeah. she's loaded like this. The jewelry is... <laughs> go, your bird, go. Well, where's Barbara? Why isn't she... Barbara's in the dressing room going, it's an exciting night. <laughs> Is it Zippity three, do is it? Da. On the wedding night, she went, no! <laughs> is it true you keep her in a vault? <laughs> That's a good one, Frank. That's good. One. Anyway, uh, look at this. George is in heat for an Indian lady. <laughs> I want to hear more about Dick Kane. Why do you pick a man like that? Because, Frank, it's all over with you. And I got all your albums, all your tapes, in the car. And I got to tell you, the time is short because we had such a bombastic show. Carol, God bless you with last to our Angie. I mean this from my heart. I know you're married to Bert Bacharach. I'm married to my Barbara. I want to be with you so bad. <laughs> Frank does too, 
but the judge won't believe it again. <laughs> We're right back. We're gonna break a station. Gotta break a station. <laughs> If I may say, Frank, if I may say, and Doc and the guys and you folks and out there, that Frank is heading back to Caesar's Palace where he's breaking. We're getting on the plane right now. And he's on the plane right now. We got with Jackie Gale, a wonderful performer. Good comic, yeah. And Don't you come up next week? When do you open? Yeah, I open uh, Thursday night at the Sahara. Sahara. And Frank, if you get a chance, when you drive by your car with Jilly, Jilly is his dear friend and my dear friend. And Jilly said to me last night, "What?" <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. You at home and you in the audience here. I'd like to thank President Joe Scandori. Thank Joe Scandori. Joe, shut up. <laughs> Ed McMahon, Angie, Angie Dickinson, George Burns, Carol O'Connor, and my buddy Don Rickles, and Doc, of course, in the orchestra. Tomorrow night, tomorrow night, Johnny will be back. Cloris Leach will be a guest. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Lionel experts, Chris and Charlotte McBride, and from the Metropolitan Opera Company, Miss Judith Flagan. Thank you so much, everybody. Be sure to see Contact on Cherry Street. Thank you.